This is Ryan Elliott for Boxing Social in association with Bedford. I'd like to be joined by Cruiserweight contender Jordan Thompson today. Jordan, thank you very much for joining me. How are you, my friend? I'm good, thank you, mate. How are you? You all right? Yeah, I'm very good. Uh, as mentioned, thanks for joining me. We've, we've had you on our, our socials a bit, doing doing workouts and stuff like that. How has your lockdown been, though? Have you been managing to keep busy, those workouts aside? I mean, it's been all right. To be fair, the, the workouts have been, been keeping me a bit more busy, which has been good, giving me something to, to, to get up for in the mornings. We give me a bit of routine back into the um, equation. But no, it's been all right. I've been handling it pretty well. Um, I'm in West London as well, which is a pretty part, nice part of London. And we've been blessed with some good weather as well, recently, which has helped. But um, I've been to and fro my, my parents, which is which has been good. So I've got to spend a bit of time with them, which is which is hard to come by these days. But no, I've been enjoying it, man. It's been um, it's been it's been fun, challenging, which is always fun. I, I like a challenge. For those of you that haven't seen them, you can head over to the Boxing Social Facebook page. There's a series of sort of hit workouts over there that Jordan's been doing with us every other morning. Me and my missus had a go. Yeah. I must say, Jordan, we had a go at one one morning, and the. The yeah. people watching this won't be able to see me. You can see me. You can imagine the struggle <laughs> we went through. So I must advise anyone who no, wants to get fit or give it a go, please go to the Boxing Social Facebook page and check it out. And no, no, no. more in the future. Uh, Jordan, today, I just yeah, want to talk a bit more about your background and, and go into a bit of depth on that. Uh, first and foremost, yeah. your family. I understand there's, there's quite a rich history of sport in your family. Tell me a bit about that. Yeah. So my mother and father, they were both world champions at karate. Um, my father won five times world karate champion. My mum was one time world karate champion. That's where they met. Um, so winning is, yeah, winning's in my blood. Martial arts is in my blood, like combat sports and stuff like that. So I think it was inevitable that I kind of ended up in a, in a combat sport. Um, but yeah, like I say, does it add it's added pressure? I think it adds a bit of pressure just knowing that they, they reached the, the peak of the pinnacle of their sport. Um, which was World Championship. Unfortunately, it wasn't an Olympic sport, but um, they, they, they reached the pinnacle and, and they succeeded. And, and, and most of all, they're, they're winners. And I think that's, um, that's definitely rubbed off on me. I've always been very, very competitive. As for my younger brother and younger sister, they're also very competitive. Um, my brother, he, he was actually, he used to play tennis as well with um, myself. We both actually started off playing tennis. That was our first, I'd say, serious sport. When we were of age, I used to play a bit of football, but um, yeah, I fell out of love with football. They let me go, man. Man, I was at like Manchester City youth team for a while, but they let me go because I went for a growth spit and I couldn't really walk straight without falling over. But we won't talk about that. We won't talk about that. But um, oh, you still got me. And then um, oh, I think my sister's in Lion King. I think she's in the English. She's in the UK tour. My sister's in the UK tour, so she's doing really well. And my brother's now on Wall Street in New York, working for a banking firm over there. So everyone's doing pretty well. So it's just me who's got to catch up. I've, I've, I'm the one with the pressure on my shoulders. I've got to come up with the goods. Everyone's leaving me behind. But no, we'll be all right. We'll, we'll catch up. You mentioned there whether that comes with a bit of pressure or not coming from a family of high achievers, and particularly with that sporting background as well. But, but does that spur you on to, to reach the top in your own industry? 100%, 100%. I mean, for me, it just gives me that extra push and that added motivation, just knowing that it's like I'm, I'm, I'm in and around winners, like I was brought up by winners. So it, it, it adds a bit of pressure, but at the same time, it does add, give me that motivation. And, and like they say, like pressure, it's all how you deal with it. I feel like I perform well under pressure. Um, I'm quite the opposite to most of people. Like, I prefer being backed into a corner. That's when I usually come up with the goods. When something's just there for me on a plate, I probably won't eat it. But if I've got to go find it, I'm going to go get it, like, no matter what. So I was one of them, even when I played tennis, I was one of them where if, if someone said to me, you can't do this, um, I'll, I will make a point and I will do it. I will prove them wrong. Where It's a funny one because uh, my brother's a bit of the opposite. He needed the whole like, approach of... Um, I, I actually coached him for a while and he was um he was more you need to put your arm around his shoulder and that but as he's grown up he's changed now and he's a bit more like me in, in some aspects. So now it's been fun to see like the whole development and how things have changed and how I've crossed over from tennis into boxing and stuff like that. But no, for sure I think the the mother and father, it's funny though because they obviously be them being winners and stuff like that, but it's tough being a son because like you always hear the cliche thing or you got to hear it from someone else. Like you can't just hear it from your parents, even though that they've done it. Even though I know they've done it, I know that they're probably right. I don't listen to them all the time. I've got to hear it from another source. It's a blessing and a curse, I guess. Blessing and a curse. You've mentioned tennis a couple of times, Jordan. That's something I wanted to talk about today. But before boxing, uh, there was tennis. I understand it was quite a high level as well. At how high a level were you competing at as a, as a youth? I was national level, I was top top national um, level. Um, I played a few international tournaments as a junior. I'd done okay in those international tournaments. I was actually top 10 under 16, under 18 in Britain um, at a time. So I was competing with some of the best kids out there. I was on um, on tour with a few, you got your likes of um, 
Ashley QH, George Morgans, Kyle Edmonds and stuff like that. Like they were all in and around. They were obviously they were the level above at the time. Um, and they were doing the international tournaments way before I was because like I, said, I was a late starter into tennis. I started at about 13, 14. I first picked up a racket, which was just alien to these guys. Like they've been playing since they were four years old. So it was always a catch up game. But um, it was, it's a game I love. Like I'll, I'll never stop loving tennis. Like that's 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 my um, my true love for sure. Like I still play to to this day now here and again. Like I'll go and strike some balls with with, with anyone that I can. So no, it's something I miss. But yeah, that was that's a hell of a sport right there for sure. So I'm guessing there came a crossroads where you had to pick your career path. Uh, sort of, I'm guessing yeah. around late teen years. Tennis is there. You've got boxing in the picture as well. Why boxing, and how hard was yeah. it to leave tennis behind? Um. <laughs> It was very, it was it was more just me accepting that I had to leave tennis behind because for me, I mean, I could still be playing now to a decent level. To be fair, if I'd have pursued it, I could still be playing now to a decent level. But it was one of them. If I'm in a sport, I want to be the best. Like you say, like with with the family that I've got, like they've just instilled like a winning mentality into me where I have to be winning. If I'm doing something, I want to be I want to be the best. I don't just want to be taking part. So for me, it was just leaving tennis behind it was more like a, a reality check for myself like am I going to be the best at this like being real like, being real with myself at the time I wasn't it was, it was hard to get the funding like there was no funding for, for people like me it was it just wasn't accessible which is really tough it's a very it's a very um high, a high sport where it's a very top end sport you're only making money and a living if you're top 50 in the world and you already know how, how good those guys are so I was a long shot off but you know again it's just the little things like one bit of funding or you get into this academy and then boom, it's changed around. But easier said than done. Like I said, I mean, if it was, if it could have been done, I'd have definitely done it. That's for sure. But um, yes, when we look back, we live and we learn. And now I'm here. And for the boxing, I think with boxing, it was funny because boxing kind of found me. Like I was, on, I only started boxing at, um, to begin with. I was unlicensed, like you know, white collar. I never went amateur. I was just boxing to begin with, just for a bit of money here and there, just to get by. And um. Every, every other fight I had, people were just telling me that like, oh, you can do something with this. You can do something with this. So. I just, had to, I just had to get down, get my head down, knuckle down and, and stick in the gym. And, and that's what I did. I was, I was in the gym for about a year and a half, nonstop, every day for a, for a good while. And that was, about, that was before I even had a fight. And I was just training, just getting that experience, which I probably missed from the, um, the amateur game and just polishing up the tools and whatnot. So it was, a, it was a hell of a journey, man. How quickly after you went from, you know, using boxing as a way to, to make a few quid and, and, and stay in shape and whatever yeah. to, to the contender we see now, how quickly did you realise that you made the right choice to pursue boxing once you sort of turned over and took it fully seriously? And pretty quick, to be fair. Yeah, I mean, for me, it was a pretty quick turnover. Like, I knew I loved the boxing part. Now, when people, I've been asked that this question quite a few times recently, like, do you love boxing? And, and my, my um, answer to that is like, what part of boxing? Like it's funny because I always like, I break boxing up. There's different parts of boxing. It's such a um, a diverse game. And I'm just like I love that. I love the training. Like a lot of people don't. I love the training. I love training hard. Like that keeps me going. It keeps me motivated. I love the the actual fighting. I love the sparring. I love it. All the other stuff. I, I'm not a fan of the all the other stuff. I leave that up to the manager, the promotion, and all that, and my coach and stuff like that. That stuff I don't enjoy, but it's got to be done. I mean, it's a tough sport because sometimes it's not really like how good you are. It's who you know and, and, and connections and stuff like that. So it's a tough one, but it's a, it's a great sport to really find out and, and ask yourself and answer a lot of questions that you have about yourself, not so much other people. And it's good to prove that um, things to yourself as well. So I think I've discovered um, a lot about myself since I've been boxing, which more so, and it's also cleared up a lot of things which I had, questions I had about myself from when I was playing tennis as well so it's kind of crossed over and it's good now I look back and think wow I could have done this different I could have done that different so it's funny because I always look at the mindset I have now and think if I had that in tennis I'd have been a completely different player so it's a funny one strange one but it's, it's one that I like and one that I relish for sure. Now with your career so far sort of in the pro ranks Jordan it's been a bit stop start at times whether you know injury setbacks or, or other reasons do you feel once once, you know, we're out of lockdown, it's the right time just to kick on now with a lot of these domestic fighters starting to face each other? 100%, 100%. And I think it's forced a lot of fighters' hands as well, where we're going to have to be fighting in those domestic fights now, which would be good fun, because in my division, especially at the minute, we could have a whole show with just cruiserweights at the minute. Like It's a real packed, packed scene, so... I'm looking forward to getting involved in some of the domestic classes, obviously. Like, you know, timing's everything with these things, but I believe in my team. They give me the go-ahead. I'm, I'm ready. I'm, all I know is that I've got to stay ready. And for me, this lockdown, it's just another another bump in the road. Like, I'm used to little setbacks and, and, and little um, 
things like that. So I'm used to it for me. I'm just staying ready, just getting working on other things that I can't work on because of the lockdown. It's like this mindset and stuff like that. And, and I'm enjoying it. Like it's really giving, giving everyone a time to like take a step back and really like plan and set out what they really want to do and really want to achieve in life. So I think it's a blessing. Like I said, I think it's a blessing and a curse to be fair, this lockdown. And we've got nice weather, so we can't complain too much. Exactly. Uh, now, at that dom- on that domestic scene, Lawrence Acoli sort of moved beyond. It looks like he's going to be challenging for World Honours. Yeah, you got like Richard Riakko, Jack Massey, Chris Billum-Smith. Is there anyone in particular yeah. in that division you look at and think, that's the fight I'd like? Um, well, I mean, there's one fight I've always wanted, and that's the Sam Hyde one, because it's just a massive fight in Manchester, like for sure. Like, everyone knows that. Everyone always asks me about it. But I've given up speaking about it now, so we'll see if it happens. It happens. If it don't, it don't. Um, but I mean, Jack Massey's from the north, up north. That would be that would be a hell of a fight. Obviously, he just come off a loss to um, Richard Riakko. Um, he put up a good fight in that, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's happening there. But that that's the fight that could possibly be made. I know he's with Frank Warren as well, so that makes sense. All the other fighters that you mentioned, great fights. The, the fights that I fancy myself in that right now, no no problem about that. So, like I say, if promoter promoter comes with a, a, a good deal, then. But we can make that happen for sure, man. We can make that happen for sure. And like you say, my coach, my manager, they've got to give it the go ahead and I'm ready, man. I know, I know deep down in myself, I know how much I believe in myself and I know I can better than all these guys. So I just can't wait to actually get that chance and that platform to prove it and um, and, and let, prove it to myself more than anyone because I think it's me that just needs that um, that satisfaction of actually proving to myself that, you know what, I finally, like, I've been able to show myself and everyone that like, I am levels above these guys. So I'm really looking forward to those, those up-and-coming challenges. Well, Jordan, something I want to ask you about is your experience of playing the part of Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury's camp. You did some rounds of Tyson Fury. Talk to me about yeah. that experience. What was that like, sharing rounds of the Gypsy King? That was that was unreal. That was unreal. For me, it was a massive shock as well in more ways than one. Like, obviously, for me, I'm 6'7". I'm a big guy, crazy height for my weight. I've never been in the ring with someone who I've had to punch up to. So, for me, it was like a big change of um, plan. But... What an experience, man. I mean, the, the amount I learned from just what, not even being in the ring with him, just watching him and, and being in and around, like, the, the atmosphere and stuff like that, like, it, it was crazy. It was crazy. I mean, I think it done more for me mentally than it did, like, technically and physically. But um, I think that's one of the most important aspects of the, of the boxing game is, is the mindset and, and, and the, mental, the mental state of a fighter. So, for me, it worked, it worked wonders, man. And it was really good just to get an insight of how someone at that level operates and trains like I went out to a camp with Usyk once but it wasn't quite the same obviously I mean no one hardly spoke any English and stuff like that it's still an amazing experience but with this one like we were we were talking we were getting to know each other we were getting to know like we were hearing some stories and stuff like that so it was a real crazy um crazy experience man but one that I relish for sure like one that I'll treasure as well man for definitely I think that's put me in good stead as well like Getting back from there, I was I was very keen to get in the ring ASAP. Like I wanted to fight ASAP, but I just wanted to put everything into 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 play. So a little bit of a step back, but we're used to them, as I say. So we keep it moving, man. We keep it moving. With Tyson, you mentioned that you had a bit of time to get to know him and just see how how he acted sort of around his camp. You know, we yeah. often see that switch go with Tyson. He can go from joking and laughing and singing to when it's business yeah. mode, the switch goes. Did you used to see that in camp? 100 percent 100 percent i'm a bit the same like people say to me like oh you're just a big joker i don't know why you box you're not serious enough to box i'm just like listen like i've got that same switch and it was good to see someone of of a higher level and use at the pinnacle of their their game also have them similarities where like he'd be outside in the ring and he'd be in his boxes having a sing and a dance and then 10 five minutes 10 minutes after we're in the ring sparring and he's looking to take your head off and i'm just like yeah that's what i loved about about him like he could be that down to earth humble human being outside the ring and then once we get in the ring with him, he's looking to take your head off. But that's what boxing's about, man. And, and, and that's what I, I love and respect it for. And at the same time, like, he's a very down-to-earth human being. Like, he's a deep, deep human being. Like, we were having some deep conversations, which was, which were really, really insightful, to be fair. And, 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 and I respect him and hold him in an even higher regard than I already did. Because um, I had a lot of time for Tyson. I know the family pretty well. And he's a hell of a man. Look at what he's been through and he's come back and, and he's reached the pinnacle of his spot again. So you can only give credit to the man. Credit given where credit's due. Now, in that that rematch with Deontay Wilder, a, a lot of people didn't believe Tyson Fury when he said going into the fight that he was going to knock him out. He was going to walk him down. He laid out the game plan on the table for everybody and nobody listened to a word he said. Were you no. surprised having seen him in the gym? No. He, he, how he approached the fight is in terms of tactically was how he was approaching sparring and he would just take centre of the ring and he's trying to dominate so 
I knew obviously I didn't want to, we didn't want to say too much. We didn't really say anything. Our interviews they were trying to prod us. I was just saying, listen, Tyson's gonna win. But um, we didn't want to give away too much. But now he was he was preparing exactly how he fought in that fight. It was funny to see because it's inspiring. Like he'd come out, he'd rush out straight and get the centre of the ring straight away and do the little shimmy shimmy. And he did it straight away in the fight. I thought like it's game over for Wilder, man. Game over. Wilder just wasn't in the fight. From when he did that, why Wilder's head must have just thinking, wait, he's coming to me, what's going on here? And um, and you gotta think the size of the man as well. He's huge. So like, if you got a guy that size coming to you, it's gonna be a problem. Like, say he ain't got knockout power, but listen, he's he's got enough power in them hands, <laughs> enough weight behind them shots to give you a problem, as we all found out. So it's interesting because I'm hearing now there's there might be a third fight. I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure your thoughts on that, man. That's a bit of a <laughs> not sure I'd be taking that if I was wild. I think he should take the step aside money and, and go and. Work on uh, work on these tools and whatnot, but each to their own. Each to their own. I'm not sure. I was going to ask you about that because it it seems pretty pretty concrete that Tyson Fury will face John e. Wilder before he goes on to try and face Anthony yeah. Joshua. In your mind, can you envisage anything John e. Wilder can do differently to beat that version of Tyson Fury? I mean, if I was Wilder, I don't know. I literally don't know, mate. Honestly, I'm looking at it. And I'm just thinking there's not enough space for Wilder to go and unlearn all of the things he needs to learn and learn all of the things that he does need to learn. So for me, if I'm if I'm Wilder, I'm just throwing my right hand more. That's the only chance he's got. I'm thinking, forget trying to box, forget trying to do all of that. You just need to throw your right, <laughs> throw your right hand. But honestly, I, I can't, if there were numbers, it'd be, it'd be scary. But I threw a lot of right hands at Tyson Fury and not many landed, mate. So... And I like to think myself as being pretty quick as well and sharp as a cruiserweight. And and so it'll be interesting, but he's not an easy man to hit, trust me. And he makes you pay when you miss. <laughs> Final thing on all things uh, Fury, Jordan. You mentioned it, whether Wilder would take this step aside or whatever. The one everyone's looking at is that undisputed fight between Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua. Huge fight, not only for British boxing, for world boxing, for the heavyweight division. In history, Can you break it down? Have you any idea how that would go down? Um, I think it would, that's a very, very because you know, if you'd have asked me that before I actually um sparred Fiori, I'd have actually been um been like, Yeah, Fiori's gonna absolutely like he'll play, he'll just play with him and just completely outbox him and stuff like that. I still am a believer that Fiori will win that fight just by completely outboxing him and outmaneuvering him, but. Recently, I've heard how physical and how much of a, phys- a strong specimen Joshua is. Joshua's got to turn that into a dogfight and get on the inside and get rough, raw and rugged. Just take it to the streets. That's what I like to say. Just, just go for kill. Like, you ain't out boxing, Fury. If you don't know that, you don't know boxing. So, <laughs> you best, best get to swinging. So, <laughs> for me, I can't wait for that fight because I genuinely don't see Joshua doing anything else but get to swinging. So, it's going to be a hell of a fight when it happens. I hope to God it happens. I hope to God it happens. But I can't, I can't see any other, any other outcome than Fiori. I, even late stoppage. Late stoppage. Like, Joshua's not got the best chin. He's got a bag of heart, but he's not got the best chin. So, I don't know. I just think Fiori's just going to punish him, man. I can't. I mean, both great fighters. But then again, if Joshua turns it into that dog fight, I can't see Fiori hanging with him in a dog fight. I don't know. I don't know. It's gonna that's gonna be a hell of a fight though. But for me, if you've got to make me pick, Fiori. Now someone else you mentioned 100%. someone else you mentioned earlier in the, the interview that you've also spotted Alexander Rusik, I'm guessing a very different feel at the camp you shared with Fury, but how do you see yeah. Alexander Rusik faring up at heavyweight? He's had his debut up there. We expect him to still face Derek Jazora at some point. Can he hang yeah. up with the big boys up there? Um uh, I'm one of them I don't like to go off. Like what I'm most to say, I like to go off what I've seen and what I've felt. And from the sparring that I had with him, I'd say yes. But then when I saw him in that first heavyweight fight he had, I was just like, he is lost in this division. And that's being fair for it's just honest. Like I like to speak the truth. I just think he's too smart. I mean, going off that fight, unless something was up, I'm hearing rumors. I was almost hurt. This, that, the other. I hope. I hope that was the case because if he gets in, I mean, if he gets in there against Chisora and boxes like that, I think Chisora's going to take his head off, to be honest, which would be surprising to a lot. But Chisora is a rough and raw guy; like he's going to be turning that into a dogfight. He's not Chisora's not going to go in there and try to jab and slip and that. Like, he's going to be going in there, just going to get on his chest and, and give him give him all hell. But I think that even the best Usyk is going to be a he's going to be um he's, he's going to be up against it against Chisora. Chisora's no mug man, and he's on a great run of form. 
he, he, he's mentally probably in the best place he's been in. So that's that's an interesting one. But I just think Usyk is he too small? And I don't think he has that power as well at heavyweight to get anyone's respect. And he's not the biggest either. That he's not. Was he six four? I don't know. It's going to be a struggle. He can outbox every single heavyweight out there. I'd say. I think he's someone. Like, someone like Fury. If he came across someone like Fury, he's not a chance he's winning that fight <laughs> for me. Anyway, I just don't see how he's going to hit him. I just don't see it. So. I don't know, it's an interesting one, but is he too small for the big boys? I think so. I think so. It's different to amateurs. Like people say, look how he outboxed. I say, amateurs are different. Big gloves. Six rounds in WSB, it's not the same, man. That weight's going to take its toll, as I'm telling you. And them little gloves, you're going to be feeling them punches. So I don't know. It, it makes for it, it's going to be fun. It definitely makes for some good fights. So we'll see, man. Him and Chisora is going to be a hell of a fight, though. That's going to be a fun fight. I'm keen to watch that one. Now, for you, Jordan, as a, a cruiserweight prospect with big ambitions to, to go out there and spar with one of the greatest cruiserweights of all time, undisputed cruiserweight champion of the world, were you just trying to absorb absolutely everything? And what, what made him so special in your, own, in your own words when you're sharing the ring with him? What stood out? Confidence. Belief. Inner belief. Mindset. It, it's nothing. There's nothing. What I've worked out from the U6 spa and the Fury sparring camps, it's 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 just reconfirmed things that have already been instilled in me from my mum and dad. To be fair, like they've always told me, like it's it's a mentality, it's a winning mindset. It all comes from within, whether it's mentally, spiritually. There's a minute percent of it which is physical for me, and I think what Usyk and Fiore both had was that that awe of of just they just used confidence and they knew that they were winners. Like they had that winning mindset. They never for once doubted themselves. And if they did, I didn't see it. I couldn't tell. It's that poker face and stuff like that. It's just the little things. And and I think they're the things that stood out for me more than anything. That's the confidence and, and the reassurance they had in their approach to, to what they were doing. I think it was second to none. Uh, Usyk especially, because for me, it was funny with Usyk, because there was no not really that much conversation going on. It was more, I was just going off the energy I could feel in there and stuff like that. And he's just in a world of his own. Like, you can just tell he sets, he regards himself like a like level above everyone else kind of thing, especially when he's in the ring. Like, I've just seen him doing some stuff in the ring. Like, for me, when I get in the ring against some of my opponents, I can just see, I look into their eyes and I just know, I say, you don't want to, you don't really want to be here right now, do you? You sit, you sit, look straight back at me. I was like, okay, it's going to be fun. And I was like, all right, <laughs> Fiori, you already know how Fiori is. Fiori don't fear no man. So, Listen, man, for me, it's just the little things like mindset, mentality, just that inner belief, you know what I'm trying to say, just those little things. And everyone can throw a punch. When you get to a certain level in boxing, everyone knows how to throw a one-two hook. Everyone knows how to throw a jab, pullback jab. But it's doing it at the right time and believing when you throw that shot, it's going to land. And, and just having that belief in yourself. So when you start doubting yourself, that's when things start to go wrong, I think. So just have no doubt, no fear, no regrets. Just keep it moving, man. Stay positive. Jordan, a couple of things I want to finish with re with regards to yourself. A lot of upcoming boxers, a big thing is vis visualisation, thinking about the end goal and what they want to get out of this sport. Have you thought mm -hmm. about that? What what you want to achieve exactly? What you're working towards? What am I working to? I mean, in boxing, in boxing or after boxing? In boxing. Oh, in boxing. Oh, in boxing. I want to be. I mean, I want to. I want to win a title at the, in the cruiserweight division. But ultimately, I want to be heavyweight world champion in the world. That's my goal. I'm big enough to do it. I believe in my, myself. I know I can do it. So. That's the long-term goal for me. Like, pick up a title at cruiserweight. I mean, I'm six seven. I don't know how long my metabolism is gonna start looking after me. <laughs> so <laughs> sooner or later, man. <laughs> Listen, right now I'm eating what I want to eat. But I'm, what am I now? I'm walking around at about fifteen eight, which for me, is like, people will be like, "Oh, that's nothing." For me, that's massive. Like, I've never been fifteen eight. So listen, I don't know. If heavyweight could happen sooner than sooner than um, I'd want it to, or I think. But listen, I'd be embracing it. I've been in there with the best heavyweight out there. And I feel like I was having um, a good time in there. So and the confidence that he giving me, some of the tips and the pointers that he was giving me was just second to none. So I've taken away a lot from that. So listen, I don't know. We'll see. But heavyweight's the end goal, that's for sure. That's for sure. That's where the money's at as well, right? <laughs> Absolutely. The marquee division. Yeah. Well, Jordan, it's been a pleasure. I've kept you for near enough half an hour here. So I think we'll call it a day there. But thank you so good much man. for your time. And like I said, anyone no, who's watching this, go check out the workouts. You'll do a far better job than I did going through and following them. <laughs> But yeah, Jordan, a pleasure and take care. Appreciate that, Ryan, mate. See you later.